I had to make a living somehow. I just wanted to. Anybody be interested? <laughs> I'm really not trying to sell you life insurance. That's just a cool commercial. And it really does show us how we're being watched all the time. Before I get started in that, just tell you about the favor of God that we're going to be starting next week. I think it's exciting. Uh, the favor of God will heal you. The, the favor of God will get you a job. Uh, the favor of God will bring you in connection with people that you need to be in connected with to have a successful life. There's nothing like the favor of God. We're going to be talking about that for three weeks. So that's what we're going to start next week. Favor of God. But today we're going to end up our series on, on people. And uh, we're going to be talking today about being a good example. Be a good example. So, uh, you know, we, we, all, we all have a ministry. And I want us to make sure we get that point today that every single one of us have a ministry. Now, you may not be at a quote-unquote pulpit like, like I have, like I do, but that's not really what a pulpit is. What a pulpit really is is your life. <laughs> that's what a pulpit really is. Um, I want to, re- I want to qu- give you this quote, or he's, he's attributed for quoting it. It's at St. Francis of, of Assisi. He said this, Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. I thought that's pretty cool. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. See, people are watching you all the time. People you have no clue are watching you. People that you know are watching you. But people are watching you. They're watching you to see how stable you are. They're watching you to see if you're up one day and down the next. They're they're, they're watching you to see how you handle the adversities in your life. There's this saying, and we've all heard it, is that actions speak louder than words. And it's so true. You can say so much to people, but if you don't live it, it's just words. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. It's a very well-known scripture, something that we're all very aware of. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? And then he says, you are the light of the world. Now, what is Jesus talking about here? You see, our lives are to be salty. And you know how it is, is that people watch you, they have these opinions of you, and you can build them up, but just in a few moments, you can do something and you've lost your saltiness. And it's very difficult to be salty again. Uh, You're the light of the world. What's Jesus talking about here? Well, people are going to be watching you all the time anyway, so why not give them something worth seeing? Why not live a life before them? Glow. Glow in our joy. Glow in our optimism. Glow in how we perceive life of being successful. Glow in, even in our times of adversity. When things are going really, really sour in life, we're still glowing. Because we know God's going to get us not, not in it, but through it. And so people are watching us all the time. They're constantly watching us. And you should have so much joy. You should have so much peace. You should, you should glow so much in your adversities. Your life should be so flavorful that people are attracted to God through you. This is what Jesus was really talking about. And one of the very best ways of, of preaching, one of the best ways of, 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 of showing forth the ministry, being salt and light, one of the very best ways that we do this is by just being happy. <laughs> by, by enjoying life. Being good to people. Smiling. Being up about stuff. Not being down. And this is one of the very best ways that you can, you can live life. And in a very positive mode, you preach so much and say so little. Maybe, maybe you work at a place where they're negative. You know, you go to work and people are talking about the boss and they're talking about how crummy the job is and, and talking about, about how, how bad this, this employee works and how hard you work and, you know, and, and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, they're, and they're mumbling and grumbling. But you walk in instead, you have a smile on your face. And you walk in and you express the thought, you know, I'm just glad I've got a job. I'm grateful for, that I have work to do. I'm grateful that I could get out of bed today and go to work. I was talking to somebody on the phone this very morning, not able to work anymore. And I'm thinking, wow, Lord, not only am I able to work every day, I'm able to get up and go to church and jump and praise you. Thank you, Jesus. So what, if you do that, if you go to work and you've got this kind of attitude where everybody else has got one of those sour attitudes, you've just preached them a sermon. You've just ministered into their lives. You've just caused them to think. And that's what preaching really does. Jesus made you think. And preaching should make you think because it causes repentance. It causes repentance means change the way you think. And what you've just done for somebody is you've caused them to help the way they think, to change the way they think. And they're going to be saying, you know what, that's how I need to look at this. 
I need to be glad that I'm able to come to work. I need to be grateful that I do have a job. I need to be grateful about this. And you've just preached them a message. You've just preached them a sermon. And we need to realize that each one of us really do have a ministry. Each of us do. You know, you may not be able to preach or, or, or share like this, but you can smile, can't you? Huh? And, and, a, and a smile is a sermon. You, you, can, you can laugh, can't you? There's a volume in a laugh. I've got that one down pretty good. You know, and, we, and when we go through life and we go out into life all the time, then what we need to go out is we go, need to go out encouraging people. We need to go out showing stability and so, showing a solidness about our life, showing something that people need, even in the middle of adversities, when things are really, really going crazy. We need to show people how to get through those things the way that Jesus says to do them. Again, preach the gospel all the time. And use as few words as you can. This is what people read. Have have you ever heard that statement, I read him like a book, or I read her like a book, or she read me, or he read me like a book? Have you ever heard that statement? It's it's biblical. The the Bible says in in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, it says there, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ. Let Let me talk about that just a second. Manifestly means that's something that's happening right now. It's manifesting. Right now, this is happening. Right now, you are preaching. You are an epistle. Now, what an epistle is, is a letter. And the, the, the New Testament is made up of, of epistles. The letters that were written to individuals or letters that were written to churches. And then they co- put them together, called it a canon in around A.D. 100. And this is our New Testament. You are the New Testament. You are an epistle that are read by people. Let me finish reading the verse. Ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tables of stone. But in the fleshly tables, the heart. It's, it's in you. And as you go forth, forth in life, people are reading you. All the time. Every day. Let me tell you something. Let me, I hope this sticks with you. You know, you meet people and you know people that will probably never read the Bible. They'll never pick up the Bible and read one page in it. But they read you every day. There are some people that will never read the Bible. But some of those people read you every single day. So what are they reading? What is the epistle of God? What are you showing them? What are you telling them? See, we've got to see that when, when, when we go out with a smile, when, when we go out into, into our, our, our churches, you have a church. Your workplace is your church. Your family is your church. Your neighborhood is your church. When you go out into your church, what are you preaching? What, what are you saying to them? What are you explain, expressing to them? What are your light and salt? What's, what's happening here? See, this is what people read. And when we go out, we go out as an expression of Christ. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, now I told you in chapter 3 that he said that we're epistles being read. In chapter 5, he kicks it up a little bit and he says here, we are therefore Christ ambassadors. Now, ambassador means a representative. We are Christ's ambassadors as though as through though God were making his appeal through us. That's exactly what's happening. And, and we go out and, and we meet people, and we've all had this to happen to us. Uh, we've, we've, we, we, we go out expressing. Let me maybe put it this way. We all have people that when they come, when they drive in the driveway, or we meet them, or we, we're going to go do something with them, they make us smile. Just, just, just them coming into our lives, showing up, we laugh because we know we're going to have a good time. They, they encourage us. Uh, they make life fun. They make life salty. They season it with their special flavoring. They, they make things good. They encourage us. They they're light us up. They make us glow. And we don't want those people to leave. But then there are other people. <laughs> and these other people show up in our lives and we say, oh, no. That's a sad face. It's another sad story. It's another depression. And, and they get around you and they pull you down. And, and before long, you're saying, oh my goodness, and you're glad to see those people leave. But usually by the time they've left, they've got you down. Now, which of those do you want to be? Do you want to be the, the kind of person that people love to see coming? 
and, and, and our expression of good things and, and, and happy things and good stuff? Or do you want to have the other where you bring a sad story every time you get around someone? See, you're an ambassador. And when Jesus sends us out, he says that he, the, the steps are ordered uh, of the Lord. People know people who go to church. And they look at their lives, they look at their families, they, they look at how they handle adversities, and they say, well, they don't handle them any better than I do. They're just as depressed as I am. They're just as defeated as I am. They don't have anything I want. You say, we can't do that. If I'm an expression of Christ, then after all Jesus has done for me, the least I can do is smile. The least I can do is be excited about life. You know, we cannot afford, we cannot allow ourselves to be a misrepresentation of Christ. And if we get this into our head and realize that there are people that we meet every day who read us, I'm hoping that that we'll think about it just a little bit more as to how we project ourselves. We all have challenges. Every one of us can find some reason to be unhappy. Every single one of us can There's something, if you were to dwell on it right now, it'll make you unhappy. But here's the key. You don't have the right to be unhappy. You're an ambassador of Christ. You are full of peace. You are full of joy. You are full of righteousness. He's been with you. He leads you through every adversity that you go through. He always makes life come out for you, and you always come out on top. Why do we allow ourselves to be sad sacks and lemons? We need to learn how to take the lemons of life and make lemonade. We need to know how to make sour things sweet. <clears throat> God sends people into our life for us to be an ambassador to ambassador to them. Now, let's think about this just a second. Say that, uh, that you, somebody was representing you. And if, oh, let's say I represent LifeGate Church. And, and I went out all over town, sloppy, just, just all down, talking about what a bad church this is, <laughs> talking about you, those members, if they would just... Is that a good repre- Is that what you want me to do? Or would you rather me go out sharp, up, happy, expressing the love of God, the peace of God, the encouragement of God? What about, what about you see, if somebody represents me, if, if somebody were to go out representing me and they went out sloppy, and, and they went out all discouraged and talking negatively about me and about everything they could find negatively to talk about, I would tell them, you need to find something else to do. I don't want to be represented like that. I want to be excited about life. I want, I want whoever represents me to be up and excited about the things of God. And we all have days, don't we, that we just don't want to be happy. <laughs> you know, leave me alone today. Don't talk to me. But it's those days that I'm really talking about. You see, I get read on those days probably more than I get read on my very happy days. And it's those days that I need to remind myself who I am. I'm an epistle being written, being read by everybody. I'm an ambassador. I'm a representative of Christ. Inside of me is salt. Inside of me is light. Inside of me is all the good things of God. I've got to bring it out. I've told you in the past about the story about my dad when he lived with us and how uh, I was having trouble with, with uh, with a bill. I was taking care of his finances and I had paid this bill. And had all the paperwork, the, the, the check that had run, and all the paid in full receipts and things. But I kept getting these, these bills, and, and, and I would, I would uh, call them back, and I would say, listen, we've taken care of this, check number so-and-so, and give them all the information. Okay, Mr. Young, we'll take care of it. Well, the next month I'd get another one, except this time we would have finance charges. And then, you know, and, then, and I'd call them back again. Hey, we took care of this. Oh, yes, yeah, we'll take care of Mr. Young. And, and this went on for several months. And then I got a call from a collector. I didn't know he was a collector. I just thought he was a part of the company. And and he called me, and he was telling me that I had not paid it. And I said, yes, I have paid it. I've got his stuff right here. I've got all this. No, you don't. He he started calling me a liar. You know, you're you're not telling the truth. And and I got, wasn't a lot of light and salt being shook there. I mean, you know. And and, and I got upset with him. And he kind of challenged me. And and I took it. (laughs) I took his challenge. 
And, and I ran out the door. I was here, ran out and locked it, jumped in my days. I was squealing out of the parking lot, going up the highway. I was going to go find this guy. And you know, what are you doing talking to me like this? I've got the stuff. I'm being honest. <laughs> I was not good. I was not a good ambassador. And anyway, I got there, and as I come into the place where I thought he would be, there was a line. I hate lines. I hate lines. And I got in this line. It was just God kind of calmed me down a little bit. And, and so I got in this line, and there's this little old lady in front of me, and she was having trouble too. And we had to stand in this line for about 30 minutes. So finally get up there at the front, and this little lady's in front of me. And, and, and she, <laughs> bless her heart, she's having trouble, and she's expressing her, her views of, of, of her bill and, and all of this stuff. And, 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 the, and the woman behind the counter is really trying to work with her, but the little old lady just keeps asking the same. You've been behind that lady, haven't you? She just asks the same question over and over and over and over, and, and she won't quit, and, and I want to strangle her. And, you know, <laughs> and so finally she, finally she gets frustrated enough that she takes all her papers and she shoves them in a the folder, and she whirls around, and as she whirls around, all, and this has probably happened to most of us, all the papers come shooting out the end of the folder and hitting me and falling at my feet. And I wanted to kick them, you know, and say, that's what you get, you old bag. You shouldn't have been there so long. But I did it. I was good. She didn't do anything to me, so I squatted down and I helped her pick her papers up and got her out of the way. And as I was raising back up, I was, I was ready to unleash all of my anger on this woman behind the counter. And I came up with my mouth open, ready to go. And, and, I, and I, as I come up, the woman's eyes meet my eyes. And she looks at me and she says, Hello, Pastor Young. What can I do for you today? <laughs> Have you ever had a moment like that where the word is on the tip, literally, and you, you grab it and you shove it back in? Because she reminded me that I'm an ambassador of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and that I'm an epistle, and she's reading me right now. And I said, um, do I know you? She says, no, sir, but I've seen you on television, and I've heard you on the radio. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so, make that story short. She takes care of it, never heard another thing from it. But my point is this, my point is this, is that you never know who's watching you. You never know who's reading your book. You, you never know. And you may say, well, you're a preacher. You're, you've been on television. You're on the radio. I don't have to worry about that. Don't fool yourself. Your children are watching you. People you work with are watching you. They're reading your book every day. People in your neighborhood watch you. People that I recognize you driving down the street are watching you. We're watched all the time. Have you ever had something like this to happen to you? I was, uh, it was spring a couple of years ago, and I, and I was working in the yards, and so I'd gone to get me some pine straw to put out in the yard. And so I went in, and I paid for my pine straw, and they said, well, back up to the pine straw. We'll come out and load you up in just a minute. Well, well to me, a minute is 60 seconds. <laughs> I back up, and I'm waiting, and I wait, and I don't like lines, and I don't like waiting. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, you know. And, I, and I'm just about to go back in, and I'm a really impatient person. And I'm working on it, but I really am. And anyway, I go back, I'm going back in to, to tell them, where's the guy? Where's somebody to load me? You know, I load it myself, you know. <laughs> Let me go. And anyway, I was about to go in, and out comes this guy. And I could tell he works there. He had the little uniform on, and he's dragging his feet in the gravel. He's just coming, you know. And I'm thinking, what is this? So I, so I said, well, okay, let's, 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 let's pump this up a little bit. So the guy gets close to me, about four or five feet away from him. I said, hey, how are you doing today? He doesn't, he doesn't acknowledge my presence. He, he doesn't look up. He just keeps dragging his feet in the gravel, walks right past me, walks to the back of the truck, starts grabbing bales of pine straw and throwing them on the truck. I said, well, this is interesting, you know. Well, obviously the guy didn't want to talk, so I just leave him alone. So, well, finally he looks up and he sees me. And I could tell by the way he looked at me that he recognized who I am. He puts his head back down, throws another bell and so on. He says, uh, aren't you the preacher of that church? I said, yeah, I am. I didn't know at that time if that was a good thing to tell him or not. <laughs> but, but he said, <laughs> said, yeah. 
And he's, he says, doesn't so-and-so go to that church? And I said, yeah, they do. Great family. I said, man, just great guy. I said, love him to pieces, man. They're, they're doing really, really well. Just really proud of them and all this stuff. And uh, so he said, yeah. He said, um, I hear you on radio every day. I said, you do? I wanted to say, okay, I know you hear me, but do you listen? You know, <laughs> Because you are not, you are not sharing with me what I talk about, you know. And, and he's just got this friend. And I says, I, so I, I try to encourage the conversation, and I say, uh, 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 do, you, do you enjoy the radio program? And he says, Yeah, I listen to it every day. So <laughs> this is a very rough guy, man. So uh, he's kind of opened a door for me to communicate with. So finally, he finishes loading my truck. And, and, and so, like I do with every opportunity that I get with somebody, I said, hey, I said, uh, how about coming to church Sunday and, and visiting with us? I said, we'd love to have you. I said, I think you'd have a good time and enjoy it. He says, I can't do that. I said, oh, really, why? And he said, i got my own church. i go to my own church. He told me which one it was. And he said, I can't come. He said, I can't miss it. He says, because I'm a greeter. <laughs> I nearly did what you did. It was another one of those things where you grit your teeth to keep the laugh from coming out. I shoved it back down. And I'm thinking, I would never want you to greet me at church. (laughs) And it was really, it was such a bad witness uh, for not just him, but for his church. And I drove off thinking, you know, it's better sometimes to not tell people you're a Christian. If that's how you're going to act, don't tell people you're a Christian. (laughs) I have we have a lady in in the church. Her name's Angela Tardo, and uh, she has her business uh, hairstyle and. And uh, she wrote on our blog, we have a blog on the website, and I encourage everybody to come and it helps me understand some of the thoughts and things that are going on and how you perceive things and experience things that we do here. But anyway, she wrote this, and I wanted to read it to you. She, he, she says, I use my job to impact a lot of people, not preaching at them, but being an example. I had a client ask me just last week, Angela, do you ever have a bad day? I thought to myself, are you kidding me? I said, I try very hard to not stay that way for very long. I laughed after he left and thought, how funny it is to see how people perceive you. And it's true, isn't it? They're reading you. They're reading you. They see joy or they see sadness. And, and, And what I'm really wanting us to see today is that some of you are really starting to see that you really do have a ministry. You reach people that I'll never have the opportunity to reach. And the best example that you can ever give them is just be happy. Be happy around them. Be fair to people. Treat people right. Shine. Be salt. Flavor life with good things. Make it, make it flavorful. Make, see, salt, salt is, a, is, a, is an ingredient that, like nothing else. And it has this special flavor to everything that you put it on. And that's the way we, you and I should be. We should flavor everybody's life a little differently than anything else can flavor it. And we should light it just a little bit differently. And you know what I found out is that people get suspicious of you if you're happy all the time. You know, they act like you're on drugs or something. And I admit I am. I'm on a high. I, I, I'm, on, I'm on the most high. I'm on the most high, God. And, and he, He's addictive. And, and when, you, when you really tap into that, and you really learn how good life is, it is addictive. And, and, and if I'm going to be a representative of God, I'm going to do it with enthusiasm. I'm going to do it well. I feel like I'm an ambassador of Christ, and that when people see me, they're seeing Jesus. When, when someone does something nice for you, make sure, uh, make sure that you respond in a good way. Even if, even if you're just at a checkout at, at the store or something and they give you, give you the receipt, you know, don't just hang in and go on. You know, make it a moment. Uh, look at them and say, thank you, I appreciate that. Here's why. It's because that person is having a bad day. How do you know they're, they're having a bad day? Because if we want it to be, every day could be a bad day. Every one of us are going through something. Every single one of us. No matter how small it is or how big it is, 
That might be the only positive thing that person hears or sees all day long, is you. So why not you be the one positive thing that happened in their life today? When they lay down at night, when they lay their head down, the good memory, the one good memory they may have of all day long is you and your smile and your being courteous and your thanking them. When you go out into your day, realize you're not just going out to work or you're not just taking the kids to to the ball field or or you're not taking the daughter to the dance class or or you're not just going shopping realize you're going to your church the steps of a person is ordered by the Lord there are people there that are going to read you there are people there that you're going to preach to and they're going to read your actions they really don't care a whole lot about what you say because your actions are speaking louder than your words preach the gospel all the time but use as few words as you can. And when you're going out, remember that you're a representative of Christ. Be an epistle that reads well. Be something that people enjoy reading. Be a good book. Be a book that's encouraging, a book that's edifying. Be something that when they look at you and they read you, that it's a good experience. Uh, some of you uh, work in a very negative place. And you can, uh, you can be a, a thermometer or you can be a thermostat. The difference is this. A thermometer is controlled by the climate in the room. If you put a thermometer in a cold room, then it drops and it shows cold. If you, if you are a thermometer type of a person, when you get around negative people, when you get around sour people, then you become sour and you become negative. You're controlled by the climate of, of that room. You're just a reflection of what's going on. If you're a thermostat, then you control the climate in the room. See, a thermostat is attached to a power source. And your power source you're attached to has all the power in the whole world. And it runs right through you. And and if you're a thermostat, then you can change the climate. If it's sour and it's bitter and it's negative in that room, then you can change it because you've got the power to do it. I want to be a thermostat. What are you? In your life, when when you get around negative people, do you become negative? Or do you turn them from being negative to being positive? What what is your life? How how do you function through life? Be a thermostat. Don't be just another thermometer. We've got enough thermometers. We need some thermostats. See, this is what people read. This is what people experience. But if I'm going to be a thermostat, if I'm going to be a thermometer, I've got to turn the switch on. Right? If I'm going to be salt, i got to shake. <laughs> if I'm going to be a pistol to be read, I've got to open up. And this is what the Scriptures talk about. Inside of me are all these things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it says this, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And that God's Spirit lives where? Where does it live? Now, we've got to, we've got to be honest about this. When... People don't see God, they see you. And in you is God. Another way of saying this is that you're a container filled with God. And God's sending you out to your workplace, that's your church, to your home, that's your church, to your neighborhood, that's your church. God sends you out to your church to pour out God on people, to pour out flavor. Pour out joy and peace. To pour out the goodness of God, encouragement. God sends you out to do these things every day. We should say, as we get out of bed today, I'm going to find somebody to make happy. I'm going to make somebody smile today. God's in me. I'm going to pour God out on someone. Preach all the time. But you don't have to use words. I was in a grocery store. (laughs) I was in a grocery store a couple of weeks ago. Well, actually, it's longer than that now, but I had, Judy asked me to go get something, and I was in the grocery store. And uh, I was in a, an aisle, and I was looking at the, the shelves and, and trying to decide what to get. <laughs> and, uh, and I glanced up, and a woman came around the, uh, the other end of the aisle. I was at, the other, at one end, and they were at the other end of the aisle. And she came around the aisle, and, and as I looked up there, she was waving. So I figured she knew me. So I, I waved back. I didn't recognize the, the lady. I didn't know who she was. But I figured she knew me. That happens a lot. 
so I just waved back. And so I just kept looking, trying to decide what to get. And uh, so I look up, and she's getting a little closer. And she's, she waved again. And I said, this is, that's interesting. <laughs> so, okay, I'll play. So I, I, I waved back again. I was kind of giggling, you know, tickling. <laughs> yeah. And so... And so I keep looking. Well, I look up again. She's getting closer to me. And she's waving at me like I'm her long-lost friend. And I'm thinking, this is weird. You know, this is funny. But I'll play. So I just turned and I waved, you know, my happy little joyful self. I just waved at her. And, uh, and she, she's close enough. Now she walks up to me. She says, do I know you? <laughs> and I said, uh, <laughs> I said, uh, well, you were waving at me. And I, I, I was waving back. She said, I wasn't waving at you. I was waving at my husband standing right down there. <laughs> and I laughed, and she laughed, and he laughed. It was embarrassing. But if I'm going to err, I want to err on that side of it. Because one day she'll know who I am. And I would rather her have that funny memory, that happy memory... That good memory of that's that preacher that was laughing and waving at me in the grocery store. I want to leave something like that. Rather than old sour, old fried up preacher. You know, I don't I don't I don't want that. I want to be a representative of Jesus. I want I want to be an epistle that reads well. And the beauty of all of this is that God says, if you give, I'll give back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. I'll have people that will give it back to you. I'll have people already ready there. For There's a day coming when every single one of us are going to need encouragement. There's a day when every single one of us aren't, aren't going to be able to get ourselves happy. There's a day when things happen in our lives that we just want to be sad. And we need somebody to come along and remind us who we are. We need somebody to lift us up and make us smile. And make us laugh and encourage us and give us back our enthusiasm. <clears throat> Jesus said this at, at the ascension in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He says, he said to them, go into all the what? World. All the world. Go into all the world and do what? Preach. And preach. Preach what? The good news, the good news to everything. <laughs> uh, no matter where you are in this world, you preach. No matter where you go, you preach. You're a preacher. And what we're supposed to preach is good news. There's not a lot of good in a sad face. There's not a lot of good in a frown. There's not a lot of good in being depressed. When you go and you preach in your church, preach good things. Preach the joy of God, the happiness of God, the encouragement of God, the blessings of God. Go and preach good stuff to people. That's what the Lord really wants us to do. See, you are light and salt. You are. And so since people are watching you, give them something good to see. Flavor lives. Be an ingredient in a life that brings out a special taste. The Bible says you're an epistle. People are reading your book every day. They're reading you. People that will never pick up the Bible read you every day. Never read a word in the Bible, but they read you every day. You're an epistle. You're a container filled with God to be sent out and poured out upon every person that you meet. And the easiest way to do it is with a smile. You are the temple of God. You're an epistle. You're an ambassador, a representative of Christ. Wherever you go, look good. Have a smile on your face. Don't go sloppy. Be a good representative of Jesus. Represent Him like you would want somebody to represent you. Be that container that's filled with God. And when you go to your church, preach well. And by the way, how is your church doing? Let's pray. Father, thank you for our time together. Lord, we love you. 
We thank you, Lord, for reminding us simple truths that are so profound. Reminding us who we are in you. And, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. For there are times, Lord, when I forget. And I'm not the light and I'm not the salt. I'm not an ambassador. I'm not a good epistle to read. And, Lord, I ask you to remind me in those moments of what I'm supposed to do. And that the people that are I'm meeting are reading me. And I ask you to help me do that. So, And if that's you today with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And, and you would admit along with me that there are times you just need to be reminded who you are. And sometimes you really don't express Christ. And sometimes you don't express light. Rather, you express darkness. And sometimes you're not salt, you're pepper. And, and, and sometimes you're not showing off what you need to be showing. You're showing something totally different. But you want the Lord to help you with this so that you can be what you're supposed to be. If that's you, would you, along with me, raise your hand right where you're sitting. And let's kind of all pray together and ask the Lord to help us. I think that's most of us. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Lord, I ask you to help us. Lord, when we come into these times and these moments where uh, we're just not being what we are supposed to be, would you help us? Would you remind us by your Spirit? Would you bring somebody into our lives that will tell us to cheer up? Act like you're supposed to act. Be what you're supposed to be. Help us, Lord, to be true, light, and solved. Head still bowed and eyes still closed. Now, some of you aren't where you need to be with God, and you know you're not. You're in a very negative place. You're sad all the time. Uh, You express sadness. You're a thermometer, not a thermostat. You're controlled by the environment and climate that you find yourself in, and you're ready to change. And not only are you ready to change for your own life, but you're ready to change because you know people are reading you. You know that you're around people, and you need to pour yourself out. You need to pour God out of you upon these people, and you need to help them. Maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you're ready. You want to have a good life, because He'll fill you with joy. He'll fill you with happiness. He'll fill you with anticipation. He'll fill you with good things. He'll heal you when you're sick. He'll make you laugh when you're sad. He's going to teach you good things and how, <clears throat> how to enjoy life. So if that's you today, and you know you're not where you're supposed to be with God, you know it, and you're ready to make it, make it right and get straight with Him. If that's you today, right where you're sitting, would you raise your hand and let me pray for you right where you're sitting? Right where you're sitting. See hands in the back. Any, any others? Three? Any others? 